Hello all, what an exciting day, electrical safety and protection. I am Thierry Julia Passa and I will discuss an exciting case study today. The incredible challenge in protection and arc flash studies. A face-to-face -face fault debacle occurred in an electrical facility and led to significant damages. The fault lasts forever. 108 cycle in, in seconds will be 1.7. This case study will introduce the fault incident and discuss the overall substation configurations. We will talk through the actual field event. I gather the event relay file and we will review the current waveforms and see when the trip was initiated. In the third part of this case study, we will review the protection scheme on that feeder. What was the intent of the trip scheme? What were the pickup points for that relay? We should note that the fault was on the primary zone of protection, so there was no coordination needed on this relay for the fault. In rare situations, we can set a relay to wait for coordination purposes, even if the fault occurred in its primary zone due to overall coordination constraints but it was not the case here. We will also calculate the arc flash calories emitted during that fault using the ETAP arc flash calculator. As you all know, at 15 kV or above, IEEE 1584 2018 does not apply and we use an arc fault module. Below 15 kV, we use IEEE 1584 2018. Third slide, substation configuration and incident review. This substation is radial and has five feeders. The feeders produce power that is sent to several data centers. Face-to-face -face fault A to B occurred at a piece of equipment located in feeder F. A transformer 34.5 kV bushing incident occurred downstream in that feeder. The fault lasted forever and transitioned to a three-phase fault. A flash occurred. The maximum fault current was 23 times nominal current. The nominal current is not necessarily the current pre-fault, as the feeder may not have been running total production. Let's go through the event files. Before we start with the events, we should note that there are four events associated with this incident. The reason is that the relay memory for an event is restricted to a specific programmable length. The relay this relay was programmed to only capture 25 cycles. So after 25 cycles, the relay ended the event. Since the fault was still present, the relay created another event right away and kept capturing the incident. It did so three times for a total of four events. This is the first event on the relay. The top graph shows current, the middle chart shows voltage and the lower ch shows digital data. I believe many of us are familiar with relay event data. For some that are not, let's do a quick tour of this image and the interface of an event data. The top graph shows current. The left y-axis has the letter A here for amps, and the x-axis for all the three charts shows CYC, which stands for cycle. America and maybe Canada use the cycle for unit of time. Our Europeans, Africans, and perhaps other places tend to use milliseconds. One cycle is equal to 16 milliseconds. The curves are color-coded and the legend shows here on the right. Red, green, blue, respectively for IA, IB, and IC. IA, IB, and IC are instantaneous value, not root mean square or IMS. I could have inserted the RMS value, but I did not want the graph to look too busy. Voltages are in the middle graph and have the same interface as the current graph. 
The main difference is on the y axis unit. Notice it says K. It's in kilovolt, not in volt. The orange cursor shows the value at the pre fault. The magenta cursor is placed during the fault occurrence. The red dotted cursor is when the fault initiates, or at least when the relay recognizes a fault has, tend to occur, has started to occur. T is equal to zero cycle start at that red dotted cursor. That's the time reference. The bottom graph is the digital data. NC nomenclature number, 50 is instantaneous, 51 is time of occurring, 52 is breaker, 51G, 51P are pickup settings, 52A, blue means breaker is on, and trip not blue means trip is not initiated. So let's roll through this first event. Prefault, the orange time cursor, we have three phase balance systems. You obviously cannot see detailed current curves because of the scale. However, you can see the voltage is looking balanced. Moreover, moreover, I place the orange cursor at the B phase, peak current, 303.613 amps. Similarly, the peak phase voltage VB is 25.5492 kV. At the red dot line, a fault occurs, phase to phase AB fault. The magenta cursor in the fault region shows peak current IA by 5167 amps. VB peak voltage drop from 25 to 16 kV. That's 0.64 per unit. 25 cycles in, the trip is not initiated. The relay memory for this event ended and the second relay start next. So the event number two. Notice the incident has evolved to a three-phase fault. Originally, IC was low, much low. Now it jumped. IB dropped a little bit, but still relatively high. The trip has still not been initiated. After 25 seconds, the relay memory for this event two ended, and the third event started next. Here we go with event number three. We still have a three phase fault. However, right at the end of the event, the trip is finally initiated. 52A is still on because it takes time for the breaker to open. It was a three cycle breaker. Notice that at the end, there are new digital data that were not present before. Input IN103 and input IN104. They are related to heat or temperature sensor. Not a good thing. Next event. We are now on the final event, event number four. 52A is finally open. The breaker is off and the fall is now clear. The fault is completely removed. Let's summarize the fault event by the numbers. The fault lasted 103.8 cycles, which is 1.73 seconds. Ridiculous. You can see the math on the slide. The max fault current was 5.7 kA. IEEE Buff Book recommends no longer than 3 cycles for instantaneous. We should have an instantaneous trip for a fault at the primary zone of a relay. For reference, the industry went from 5 cycle breaker standard speed to 3. Now we are slowly adopting 2 cycle breaker, although I mainly see it only in the high voltage. There is currently ongoing work for making 1 cycle breaker. So the industry recognizes that 1 cycle matters. 1 cycle is enough to cause an electrical fire. This slide shows the normal load on that substation and the substation configuration pretty straightforward with all the feeders. You can see on the left side feeder F nominal condition 431 amps. Here I can see the substation when I faulted an equipment at feeder F. I placed the A to B fault at the same equipment downstream at feeder F and you can see the reading on the substation on each feeder. On feeder 52-F relay, you can see 9 kA on 
each phase for the phase to phase fault. Look at the difference between real life data versus simulated data. ETAP shows 9KA, the relay shows 5.7KA. We have a problem, don't we? The designer here used the pickup current around 9KA and expected the relay to react. However, the fault was much lower. Depending on how the relay is programmed, it might not trip or trip at a slower time. The main issue here was understanding how to perform studies using minimum and maximum trip values. ETAP features such as ETAP star auto evaluation and ETAP arc flash auto evaluation could have helped find those shortcomings. <clears throat> I would like to address one big myth I often hear. The real job is to protect the feeder. It is not true, or should I say, not always true. A feeder is a cable. However, sometimes you have equipment on that feeder that relies on the relay for primary protection. In this particular case, on feeder F, the relay had to protect multiple pieces of equipment, buses, transformer high side bushing, section of cable. Next, we will talk about the arc flash calculator. I want to figure out how many calories did the incident released. Use the ETAP arc flash calculator. We remember there was a line to line that evolved into three phase. I utilized each arc fault method on the calculator for each fault to determine calorie exposure. The first incident was line to line. I populated all the required fields on the arc flash calculator and paid attention to selecting arc flash here. The enclosure field must be populated accordingly. I insert the fault occurring and the fault clearing time. And the calories results show here 16.52. Similarly, I did the same scenario for the three phase fault part. Fault current and fault clearing time insert are the right field. Calories show here 37.92. The third scenario was to see what would have happened if the event had been a three-phase fault. Picture this event being a three-phase fault for 1.7 seconds with the same amount of current. Arc fault here, 7KA, 1.7 seconds, the result shows 85 calories. I want to note that all those fields, all the fields on this uh, image are critical and must be populated correctly. You should try to assume as little as possible. Now we will do the last simulation. What would have occurred if the fall was at the low voltage? This transformer low voltage was 690 volt and still relies on that relay and breaker during an arc flash. Look at the significant difference. The result is 170 calorie, quite high. This is why low voltage is incredibly much more dangerous than medium to high voltage. The amount of current is obviously much higher and it is one of the key reasons. In conclusion, understanding minimum and maximum fault current values are critical. In this case study, the shortcomings led to a fault not being removed fast enough. Short circuit impedances that are very valuable. It is critical to have the right cables and impedances of the equipment. An excellent learning from this case study is that line-to-line -line arc flash fault exist much longer at medium voltage level. In low voltage, we do not see those type of line-to-line -line arc flash faults because a line-to-line -line arc flash fault will rapidly turn into a three-phase fault. The arc flash calculator is a great tool to estimate incident energy. The arc flash calculator shows both methods. Below 15 kV, we can use our triple E 1584-2018 to calculate incident energy. At 15 kV and above, Arc fault calculator method can calculate calories exposure during the fault. 
My presentation ends here. Thanks for your time and your attention. Elfin, la fin, the end. Any questions?